but we'll just again we'll give it a, another minute or two. Um, I think at f- I think after five minutes we'll start. Oh gosh, um, but yeah, I guess before we dive in, uh, do you want to give sort of the disclaimer, the yes, positive and exciting vibes, very much so. Um, but I do want to give the disclaimer again, just so that everybody's on the same page. Um, but I am James Cheek. I am uh, an actor, a uh, voice actor, and writer, um, and as well as some as uh, well as some other things. Uh, I my uh, I currently am a contract writer for Crunchyroll, uh, where I've been writing on a number of different anime sh- uh, anime series, um, and I have been studying comics uh, both uh, sort of in higher education as well as just personal. Um, uh, personal education f- for uh, like almost 20 years now. Um, I am in no way directly affiliated with Webtoon. Uh, this series is no, is not di- uh, this, uh, nah. this uh, series that I'm doing is not directly affiliated with Webtoon. So everything that I say and everything that I'm talking about here is my experience, my opinion, and is not a reflection of Webtoon or any, or anything that'll be happening with the competition. Uh, uh, see, Zobralals six, six mine's not on the dock today, but I hope to see what you think of my friend's stuff. Oh, okay, cool. Well, I will have stuff to say about everything here today. Um, so yeah, so it's just sort of you know my opinions are my own. Um, they come from uh, mostly a writer perspective, uh, but I have some write, uh, some background in art, and I also understand layout of comic books as well. Uh, so that's where all this is coming from, uh, and this is just going to be me. So we're going to be looking at stuff. Uh, talking about what works, what doesn't work, what I would like to see more of, all that other fun stuff. I will be looking at this stuff through the lens of the competition, though. Um, So I'll be kind of gauging it on how I would have interpreted some of these things based off of the rules, or not rules, but just sort of the the expectations of what the competition was doing. (sighs) All right, well, so I guess without further ado, let's get into it. So, haha. So the first... First comic we're going to be covering is uh, Iliot Crest's Her Visitor. Let's pull out my notes. Here we are. Uh, Alrighty. And so uh, the description for this is uh, the great dragon receives a visitor in her home. What does this traveler desire? So essentially the story in a nutshell is uh, a fox or fox demon of some sort. Uh, enters the domain of a dragon, and then they fight. Um, and that is just kind of about it in terms of story, uh, which is perfectly fine, especially for a competition like this, because this is an action, you know, this is a call to action, this is an action series, you don't necessarily need a lot of story, you just need an excuse for people to fight. And it's definitely what's here. Um, now, uh, the, I would say, uh, before we get into a lot of the nitty gritty, we're going into the narrative, uh, talking about the narrative a little bit. While something like this doesn't necessarily need a lot of story, like if you just if you just want an excuse to have these characters fight, then just you know have the characters fight. That's not that you know it's not that big of a deal. Um, there is, however, a lot of instances of the characters talking at each other which is uh kind of an attempt at like banter or explaining like the combat of things um or like what their you know what their what their combat move is going to be or something and there's just a little bit too much of it for me um because the the focus of this story as i've read it is just the fighting is not because there's very little uh, setup for the characters, for their conflict. I mean, there really isn't even a personal connection for the fox demon to be fighting the uh, um, uh, for the dragon. She just kind of shows up and is like, I want to I want to see what you taste. You know, I want to eat you and, and gain your power. And that's all that's the only motivation that you need. Um, but if you're going to give it a such small bit of motivation, then you just really need to let the fighting do a lot of the co- do a lot of the. Uh, a lot of the talking. Um, when I was reading this, a really good example of what I kind of wanted to get across, uh, or what I thought would be like a better sort of format for this kind of story, would be uh, if anyone in the audience, if anyone chat has seen the uh, the kung fu movie Hero with Jet Li, um, where it's about uh, Jet Li who plays an assassin who is re- telling stories, uh, or who um, 
who uh, this king, sorry, I'll start at the beginning. Jelly is an assassin uh, in sort of f- fantasy ancient China. Um, there had been <coughs> there had been a number of attempts uh, attempts on the life of this one particular king uh, who was trying to who was sort of invading. I think it was it was about the Warring States period of China and how this and how um, the uh, the current emperor oh, this the current king was trying to unite all the different. Um, here was a great movie, uh, Zobra. Uh, I recommend everybody watching it. But it's uh, this one particular emperor's waging war against all the neighboring clans, trying to unify everything. Um, and there had been a number of attempts on his life, and there had been one that had been so successful that he created this rule where you could only, um, like, where you could only be a certain amount of distance away from the king, but if, but as a boon, if you were able to present um, uh, to present uh artifacts or proof that you had killed uh the the assassins who had a, who had attempted to kill him uh and had sort of been the inspiration for these rules then you would allow then you would be allowed closer to the king and so Jet Li is uh, is sort of telling the stories about how he ended up fighting and killing all these different assassins as he's slowly getting closer to the king you know, um, and the fights themselves, they have, you know, there's, there's, there's an emotional context to them, but for the most part, there is just sort of like a brief setup and then there's the fight. And then like the emotions of the fight are carried out through the choreography. Um, like one that I really, uh, one that really came to mind was the sort of the first one, which is, I forget the assassin's name, but he uses a spear. So it's Donnie Yen and Jet Li fighting each other in this movie. And, um, and it's supposed the the sort of frame narrative of it is that he's talking about how like when two martial artists are so good that they can sort of play out a whole fight in their minds and then and then like in one stroke kind of figure out who's going to win or lose and so it's this um so it's this shot of just them kind of standing off and off in their own respective corners and then uh it would cut to sort of a fantasy fantasy sequence of them doing this really epic battle and that whole thing there's no dialogue there's no nothing it's just music and fighting um and it's really really effective because of the choreography and the performers and the cinematography and all these other things but because there's no dialogue a lot of other things have to kind of pick up the slack and uh, in this story, it seemed like uh, a lot of slack was kind of was was sort of relegated to dialogue and banter, which took away from just the pure sort of con- uh, combat context of everything. So I thought there was just a little bit too much there that took away from what could have been just like a really sort of um, interesting visual story as it played out. Um as far as readability goes in terms of like layout and things like that, this, I, this is really pretty. Um, uh, you, uh, page keeper, you can for, I know you can for sub webtoon for some webtoons or some webtoons have like, uh, have, uh, music and stuff on them. I don't know exactly how that, uh, how that function works on the platform though. Um, but uh, the layout, is, I, do, uh, I thought that the color scheme was great, the sort of blue and pink of everything. Um, one thing I will say about the layout, so like the panel structure, oh, canvas doesn't. Oh, okay, only for originals. Ah, oh, okay, okay. Um, I will say the panel layouts are pretty uh, basic and straightforward, which again is fine. You don't need all that craziness. But I, will t- I do want to talk about this in terms of layout. Um, now this is a little less prevalent on the phone, but there's just this massive, there's, there's more than kind of one where there's just like these big chunks of just solid color. Um, Oh, that's cool. Recommended listening. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a good idea. Um, but I'll have these sort of big empty spaces and this one is sort of particularly big. Um, yes, the lighting is very pretty on here. Um, where it is just, it is just one solid color for a period of time. Now, um, I've talked about how webtoons are just kind of like one giant panel. They're just one giant scroll. And so this kind of negative, having this giant chunk of negative space, especially as like a transition, is not a bad idea. But because it is just one thing, it's just one solid thing and there's no change to it, it's not doing a lot of work in terms of helping uh, continue the flow of your comic. It just sort of seems like a very weird break here. Um, it doesn't feel like a scene transition. It doesn't feel like a shot transition. It just sort of feels like a space. 
And so here you could have had, you know, like a gradient. I mean, it doesn't have to be much. It could have been a gradient. You could have continued with the, uh, the cherry blossom motif down into here just to give it something because, you know, like I'm moving through this in the scroll, either scrolling up with my finger or, uh, you know, with the mouse wheel. And if it, and if I don't see any movement, if I don't see anything, it's just this sort of, you know, it's just this white on this really uh, pretty sort of purple, um, then I, I'm not getting any sense of motion. I'm not getting any of this sort of unique stuff that makes what a webtoon is. And it's just kind of a wasted opportunity. Um, you know, and it, and it feels more like, uh, um, it feels more like a, uh, like a, what, like it feels like something should be there. I don't know, like, or is something wrong? Is there more con like, I'm more, cons I'm more curious about like, where's the, where does the comic pick up again, rather than enjoying the transition into this new scene, which is right here. Um, so he does something to get hard for me to tell if, there's, uh, if the spaces for effect are just loading issues. Yes, page keeper. That's, that's kind of exactly what I'm getting at. Um, and so like all it really needs is just something there, something to break up the just solid color, um, or just the solid use of thing. Um, and especially if there's like some type of like, uh, like last week with, um, uh, with uh, Daphne's um, uh, work where it was the, the sort of S, uh, the sort of snaking pattern of like the panels and different frames and stuff. Like if there's just something there that provides some sort of change as you're scrolling through, uh, does quite a bit in uh, to sort of give a sense of movement. Um, see, the space would look really good as some of those uh, petals falling into the panel. Yes, like that. That's exactly what I'm saying, Paige. It's just, it's just like continue this petal motif and then let it fall into here, especially and like not even like because there's like this hard break right here with the panel border. You know, just kind of like get rid of that. Just sort of grade. Uh, you know, just sort of like. Uh, just sort of like blend into this and then have like the petals sort of going over it. So we get this feeling that the petals are falling down in front of you or in front of the camera. Uh, and then as you transition to this new scene um, now, that's a lot of, you know, that's, that's, that's harder. It's a lot of more work. And there was a different, there was a time limit on this thing. So like, I'm not faulting, um, uh, but I'm not faulting uh, Elliot Crest for her, her work here, but it is just sort of like a missed opportunity that I was reading that I was, uh, that I was like, Oh man, this would have been so much, this would, this would have been that much more. I would have punched this up that much more if we had that in there. Um, let's see. What are my notes? Uh, scrolling down ones. But yeah, so there's there's a couple of moments in here that do that. Like, see here, here's a good example of like using the scroll for a really interesting way where we have just, you know, we have the steps and then they're going down. So like as we're moving, sort of like the scene is transitioning and we get the sort of uh, the, the illusion. Hello, Blue, uh, Blue Mouse. Um, we get the illusion of motion here as the scene shifts and just like the, the petals over everything. Actually, to be quite honest, now that I'm kind of going through this another time, um, having the petals uh, like not be blocked by panel borders, but just be like over this whole thing, I think would have been really interesting too. Um, but here we have a nice one too, where like it comes here, it's, it's sort of, it's narrower and then it broadens out into this next scene down here. And then we have the, you know, then we have this visitor coming in. Um, so like there's some moments where like it's, it's, you know, the scroll is being used to, uh, to, to enhance the story and other times it's just this missed opportunity there. Um, and so we have her just coming in and giving this excuse you know great tragedies befallen my family and really it's just them it's just her trying to fight this this dragon lady i do love the dragon's design i like the designs in here like i like her setup uh and then like the and then there's like a rabbit motif that you have with her and then she shows up with the fox design right here and she's got the big hair and everything and that's really fun um let's see so as far as clarity goes, like flow of story, things like that, um, because the essential plot is really, really thin is not the word I want to use, um, but because it's really sort of very simple and straightforward of just someone shows up and fights a dragon and then that's the end of it. Um, <coughs> uh, you know, then you know, then, then like the, it's, it's really sort of clear on that front in terms of like what's going on. Um, there are moments 
I feel like that are like that are kind of allusions to things. Are the rabbit attendants? Yes, the rabbit attendants are very cute. All the rabbit stuff in here is, is really super cute. Um, now here's what I'm talking about. Uh, sorry, like uh, sorry to go back to an earlier point, but here's sort of an example of like using sort of the solid color as a transition thing. So we have here, and then we have just like two petals, and then a gray, and then we grade into here, and then and then you know scene transition. So like we know that there's a change going on when we get to the next panel. Um, and then here's another, here's a cool, here's a, a really good use of it too, where like we start off, we see the attack, we see it expand, and then we see it hit her, and then we see the result of the hit. And then this is really good right here, just using sort of this uh, oblong, this sort of uh, non-traditional like panel uh, border right here of just these hard lines, or hard sketchy lines um, is really great. Um uh, but yeah, it, you know, so like as far as clarity goes for the story, it's pretty easy to follow. But there are um, there are a handful of moments that were kind of like that I that were just meant to be bant. I'm pretty sure we're just meant to be banter, but it doesn't really land. <sighs> um, let's see what which one I'm trying to. Uh, but um, try, there's, there's coming up. Uh, let's see. Yeah, here we go. For someone so brave as for her brains, you sure fell for this easily. So this line is just kind of like empty. It's not really serving anything. Hello. Not a cap. Um, this line right here is not really serving anything. It just sort of feels like a, like an empty band. It's, it just feels like something that someone would say to like show that they feel like they have a one up over somebody, but we don't have any information about this person other than like visually we've seen her read uh, and that she was reading all the time uh, and that she's a dragon and like sort of traditionally in mythology dragons are wise, but here she's referencing is like, Oh, this person is, well known and she's known for being smart and she was tricked but one it doesn't feel like she's been tricked because earlier she was announcing her attack or announcing her sort of turn of phrase like i'm not the one who should be escaping um you know your is infinite wisdom to let your guard down and then just like all this other stuff happens and she doesn't feel she hasn't really necessarily been tricked yet she's just sort of like the, she's just sort of attacked her in a way that she wasn't expecting uh, and also she didn't, f you know, like fell for this one easily felt saying that you fell for it in this context sort of implies that this was a plan of the foxes to kind of get her into this realm so she could use this attack. But earlier she, you know, you criticized me for using chip cheap tricks, but what do you call this? So there's not like an agreement there in terms of, in, uh, in terms of context where here she seems surprised at being drawn in earlier, um, you know, like she gets knocked back and is sort of surprised to get pulled in this new dimension. But then later she's sort of, you know, later she's behaving as if this was sort of a, a part of the plan all along. Um, and it just kind of, it took me out of it a little bit, not going to lie, um, because it didn't seem to agree with any of the other context. And so it was like, this is just, a, this is a cool line. This is a great line for your antagonist to say. Um, but it doesn't, it's not doing any work here and it's just serving to distract from the conflict. Um, and then, uh, and then here's another thing that I kind of want to talk about that I noticed in a couple of these this week is redundant dialogue. Um, so illusions, no. And then she then explains, uh, yep. And then she just sort of explains that they're not illusions. It was like, how, you know, how do you, how do you like me? Uh, cute little tales Be uh, because these are no illusions. They're just as real as me. So here we're kind of just, we're saying the same thing over again, where you have the dragon realizing that these are copies, not necessarily illusions. Um, and then she's just saying the same thing. And so visually you've already, and you don't necessarily even need to say that these are illusions or not, um, because you can have them physically just like interact with her visually. You could just have these physically interact with her and then we can see, oh, they're real and tangible. Like this was sort of a moment where you could have shown and not told. Um, and it, uh, and they, yeah, and they can dish out a pain. This is also another instance of redundant dialogue is like they can dish out pain just as well. Um, but if you're saying that they're just as real as her earlier, like right above it, 
um, you know, she's saying that they're equal to her. So they're, of course, they're going to be, do- they're going to be able to do this. You don't necessarily need to remind the audience that they can do this because you've already inferred it. Um, so this would just kind of, this could have just been replaced with like a, you know, like a more sort of villain, like I'm going to get you kind of line. Um, and then, uh, you know, and then fighting starts and then she seems annoyed. <laughs> this was funny. Just her being super annoyed. Um, but yeah, but that's kind of an example of sort of the redundancy in dialogue. You do see it a lot in like, um, cause there's another, there's another comic that we're going to cover this week, uh, or to cover today that does this quite, that did this quite a bit. That was a bit more obvious about it. Um, but, uh, but you see this a lot in like, uh, manga and anime and things like that, where like something's happening. Uh, oh, for heaven's sake. Hang on a second. I gotta. I gotta. I gotta ban somebody. Or ban a bot. Hang on a second. Uh, and where are you? No. Ban it. No, I don't want to reply. God damn it. I did this the other day. There we go. Oh, no, that's report. Is reporting? Is that it? No. I, I banned this person the other day. Oh, hold on a second. Let me... Hang on. Let me move this so you're not just seeing all... Uh... uh Hang on, I'll just move this right here. That way you're not just staring at it. Staring at me trying to... There we go. Oh my god, there's just a button. There's just a button right there. I'm so stupid. Anyway, bots banned. I I am I am smart genius person. Here we go. Right, let's get back to here. Um, But yeah, back to what I was saying earlier. So, uh... Um... So, like, this happens a lot in, like, you know, sort of, like, especially, like, shonen manga, where, like, someone does something. Okay, yeah, I know. I just, I wanted to get rid of it. Um, but uh, but in, in shonen, like, this happens a lot in shonen manga, where it's, like, someone does, so, an action happens, and then, like, there's someone off in the distance who's watching it and just sort of, like, reiterates everything that just happened. Um, sometimes giving, like, further context into what it is. But... Um, you know, but just sort of says, oh my God, he just punched him in the face or something like that. Um, and, uh, I have, uh, uh, yeah, I, I went, I already went there and got it. Um, uh, no, it was the circle with the dash through it. Uh, Zobra, um, or Zobral, um, Zobra lols, uh, train of thought getting back on the train of thought. Yeah. So it's happened. So this type of, uh, this type of dialogue and sort of like, n- I guess, narrative device happens a lot in, uh, anime and manga. Um, and I personally think that the reason that is, is because of how the Japanese language works necessarily. The, the, the language is not sort of the, the language is not like English in that in romance languages, a lot of, information is in what you say and and how you're saying it and what you're not saying so there's a lot of like implied and inferred information um or or shown in like tone and things like that whereas in japanese a lot of what a lot of it's just like literally being said it's just i think uh like um uh i was i was listening to j michael tatum talk about uh writing anime uh, and talking about like sort of the job of an adapter and how that like a little like in an instance uh, he, he was talking about this example where um, if we're in a room and then all of a sudden an earthquake happens you know a, a group of English speech- speakers would be like oh my god what's happening um, we need to get out of here like just talking about the situation talking about the situation or how to act or react to the situation um, whereas if this was a group of Japanese people um, they would be saying I don't remember the word um 
but um, but they would be, but it's the word for like it's shaking, and they would just be saying that over and over again, like it's shaking, it's shaking, it's shaking, and that's just it's communicating the same information, but just how the language works is that that's how you would do it is you would just be literally talking about this thing. Um, and I see that a lot in, uh, in people who like have primarily sort of engaged with and sort of learned how to tell stories through, uh, through anime and manga. Um, maybe, I don't remember what it was. This was years ago when I heard him talk. So I don't remember the, uh, I remember the idea that he was getting at, but I don't remember the, um, the word that he was using. Uh, but, um, you know, and so like, so that happens quite a bit in, in anime and manga and like, and it wouldn't necessarily be weird in Japanese for that to be happening. And sometimes it's used to like describe what's going on to the reader because what visually what's happening is kind of abs- more abstract than what's actually being represented. Um, yeah, it's just, I forget what word, it, what, what word it is. Um, you know, and so like, I think for someone who has a lot of a lot more experience with uh um with like uh, with like Asian Japanese stories and that kind of being a normal thing that that wouldn't necessarily um Oh hi Ella Chris. Yes, we are just talking about we're talking about your stuff right now. Um <laughs> uh yes, but I'm pregnant. Um but just to finish up, uh, finish up on this idea where it's like if you're more familiar with – if you're m- mostly familiar with that kind of storytelling rather than like a more Western st- kind of storytelling, what happens is like if you put th- – that stuff may not necessarily register as off. It may just sort of register as like a um, – oh, I'm sorry. Uh, hopefully we provide a, an effective distraction for you. Um, family, uh, family things can be quite a bit. Uh, I hope everything is fine. Um Yes. Uh, I got, I need to finish this, this thought, this one simple thought. Um, but it may not register as odd. It may sort of register as like a, like a trope of the kind of story that you're trying to tell, or it may just, it may just sort of come across as normal, but for an English speaking audience, it comes across as odd. Um, it comes across as like sort of redundant and unnecessary and, and seems a little like, uh, it feels more like bad writing. I think to uh, to uh, an English speaking audience than it would um, uh, than it would a non than like a Japanese or so, or someone who's a part of that culture, um, uh, you know, it wouldn't necessarily seem as bad writing in that context. So that is something that uh, that I think uh, I'm going to be noticing more as these goes on because there you know a lot of a lot of these are very anime inspired, but that's just sort of something to keep in mind that like. Um, you know, you don't need to, if you can, you know, if you're doing, if you can visually tell something, you don't need to say it again. You don't need to iterate it again. Unless there's some piece of information that you can't visually get across, then you don't need anyone to talk about it. Um, you know, unless like it's within their character to talk about it or, or, there, or there's some other thing going on rather than just literally retelling what we just saw. If it's all, if all it's doing is just explaining to us again what we just saw then it's not really serving anything and it's just sort of bogging down your story and your flow um i think it's something that we can adopt from western comics you used to see it a little bit in early way yes so i will so uh illicrest i will say i will i will expound on that idea um a lot of people are adopting it again yes so part of that uh is that like comics as a medium were newer uh, in you know, because like because like that was al- uh, when when you know it's been almost it's been over a hundred years or so since American comics uh, started, and at that time it was a new it was a brand new medium of storytelling for most people, and so there wasn't a visual language to effectively communicate all the things that were trying to be communicated, especially in like superhero stuff where you're getting sort of, you know, these wild sci-fi concepts or mystic concepts or something like that. And so, you know, so you kind of need, and like I said earlier with, uh, with some manga where like they're reiterating something, but they're sort of explaining like the weird stuff that's also going on. That's not visually being told. Um, and so that's kind of the same thing. Whereas like early on, there wasn't really a language developed, um, to be able to like visually explain a lot of these things or visually show a lot of these things. But we've had, you know, a century of this medium, 
uh, grow and adapt and, and, and there be a language formed. So I think for someone, maybe not necessarily for a newer comics person, like a less experienced comics person, that explanation would maybe be more helpful. But for some, but for something like Webtoon, which you know has this built-in audience of people who kind of get it and and are reading these things regularly, um, there's already a, they're already have they've already have learned that kind of visual language, and you won't necessarily need to talk to them like that uh, all the time. Unless there's something like really abstract, but like with here in your stuff, um, you visually got across a lot of that information and like the fight and stuff. Like I was talking about, um, you know, sort of talking about here where it's like, you know, these, these illusions are just as real as me. We're kind of coming into assuming that these, that these are, or like with right here, illusions, no, you already, you effectively translated everything. You don't need to reiterate it again here. Um, and it just sort of, that just sort of, uh, sort of derails the pacing of your story instead of just getting into the fight and combat. Um, so I can get rid of the sound effects. <laughs> so um, the sound effects lettering and things like that. Some. So here's the thing. Here's the thing that I notice about them is that when I'm reading comics, I tend to not be not pay attention to those a lot. Um, but when they're gone, like I notice them and I think that's kind of like how they, how they work is that like, if the effect is there, then you, uh, you know, then you can, then it sort of translate information and you're not really paying attention and then it sort of adds to everything, but you're not focusing on that specific part of the lettering. Um, but you know, if it is gone, then it does sort of give this sort of silence to things that type of, um, you don't always need effects, I would say, but like it to get rid of them wholly. I think, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, net cap, uh, netto cap. I agree. Where it's like, um, you know, like the the sound effect stuff is definitely uh, is is definitely um, something that that adds there. But you can do interesting things. Like there's a there's a uh, there's one that we'll talk about later um, where they did some really interesting stuff with the lettering of the effects and you can, and that can add to like sort of the, the sort of audio of your, of your story. Um, so no, there's still, unfortunately I'm talking about like, uh, like visually showing, um, you know, like sort of like visually showing ideas and things like that, not necessarily uh, like the effects or the, or like the hit or something like that. Like, like say like this right here, um, you can kind like this impact is pretty, you know, like is actually really good. And, um, uh, and I think could still, could still work without, uh, the, the lettering here of pow, but pow just sort of adds that, especially how you've done it adds to the impact of, um, of, of the action itself. Like that's kind of what it's for is it's just, it's just there to reinforce the thing that we're seeing. And especially if it's, you know, lettered in a different way, that's, that's when like this kind of stuff really shines is when you, is when you design it around the, the sort of onomatopoeia, um, then it just sort of, then it just, then it just, uh, enhances the action of what it's describing. Um, so, you know, again, with like the boof here, you know, like, yeah, you can have this just by itself, but then having this effect next to it just sort of beefs it up even more and it gets, you know, and it, and it hits heavier. Um, and then... Uh, let's see. And notes talked about that. All right, so yeah, that's, that's uh, about the clarity of story. Um, and then as far as the action goes, the action's great. I think you did a really great job. Um, there's a lot of great, there's a lot of great movement and moments in here. Um, you use the panel outlines effectively where, you know, if, so, if like some action's happening and you want to sort of, uh, and want to reinforce that this is an intense thing, you, you like, you do these things right here, which is great. Um, uh, there's a couple of like stiff moments here and there. Um, but otherwise this was really good. Uh, let's see. It's a very optical illusion thing. You don't notice them, but usually blends and forms its own image. Yes. Almost feels like your head is putting them in there somewhat. Yes. That is exactly kind of how those work. Um, here's another example of kind of like redundant dialogue where like we've, you know, she's counting them, uh, in her mind. And so this information is already given that, you know, like eight tails, um, and that there should be another one. 
Uh, and then she just kind uh, and oh wait, no, never mind. This is not what I was thinking of. Um, this was this was this this progression was fine. I was thinking of something different. Uh, but yeah, like here, this is really good too. Uh, and then especially because you have so like right here, this is cool because you have the image of her kind of cut off, but the sh you know like the big impact here. You have this border that's reinforcing the 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 hit and just the um just how intense the uh the stab is then you have the lettering behind it so it's like the the you know so it's like you're we're really getting fo like hyper focusing on what she's experiencing and how painful it is for her and then you have these nice like sort of almost speed lines down here as we draw into this so we have this big impact and then we have the payoff right here of this gnarly image of her getting run through with a spike this is great i love this stuff uh, and then it bleeds, you know, and then as it bleeds in, you know, it's sort of reflexive of blood and stuff. And so this is, this little sequence right here was really good. Hats off to you. Um, uh, let's see. We have her to eating. And then she, and then she gets stabbed with all these people. Um, but yeah, so like, here's another, so here's a, here's a, here's an example of what I'm thinking of, of like redu of redundant dialogue. So it's like, I can't move. What is this? We know she can't move cause she's like pinned down here. Um, so she doesn't, you know, so this, so you don't need to necessarily say what the state of what is going on again. Um, you just need to, you know, she can still like this expletive works good of just like, what is this or something? Cause that hasn't been explained yet, but to say that she can't move is is sort of redundant and it's like yeah we saw this happen we kind of her getting pinned down by all the like all these panels right here are doing the job of showing that she's being pinned down and so she doesn't need to say anything about it we just need to move on but um but reiterating that information kind of like just as i said before just sort of slows down and breaks up your flow um uh i didn't make it uh but thanks for doing my uh reviewing my entry uh sleep with the fish i appreciate you oh thank you yeah no, that was that was fun. Um, thanks for stopping in now. Simple, some readers miss simple things like that. Yeah, true, but I think uh, I, I think it makes a stronger entry because, like, um, you know, if if that's just sort of shown and not not literally told, because uh, even after a while, like someone who's reading your thing will eventually learn the kind of um, learn the language that you're doing uh, and figure this out on their own. Uh, if you don't clarify, you tend to get readers who are like, uh, why doesn't she just run around and take out the rabbit, uh, rabbit attendant? So there's, so there's other things that you could do to show that she's pinned, that show that she's pinned in rather than her just saying it. Cause also it's like, um, you know, it's also the awkward thing of like, you know, you're, st uh, of, of just something like this happening in the middle of a fight and you're like, Hey, I'm stuck. What did you do? Um, whereas it's just kind of like, like what, you know, why are you literally saying, stating your, um, uh, like what's physically happening to you when we can see physically what's happening to you. But there could have been like effects, you know, like little lines here or there or something to show that she'd been like paralyzed or stuck. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, I wonder, it's often hard to tell when situations like that sometimes you might not realize because of how they're reading and sometimes it was just confusingly drawn. Fair, like, you know, like I would say now, granted, I'm I'm pretty literate when it comes to comic books, um, so uh, you know, so like it, I can understand that she like I've seen enough things like this before to kind of get the implication that she's not going to be able to move. Um, someone who a reader who's not necessarily as well versed may be confused, um, and uh, Illicrest, you you know, you're saying that yeah, like she is kind of dumb, and you did establish that th that she is kind of dumb. Like you, in in the beginning, you established her as like she's she tries to trick the the dragon, but is caught really quickly. She initiates a fight, um, kind of out of nowhere, and then is brought to this dimension really quickly. And even and then she, you know, she does she throws her trump card, and then that gets. Uh, that gets like uh, that gets sort of undone really quickly. Um, well, yeah, but just like ca like character wise, it was just kind of like you know um, this like the brain. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh God, I took I drank coffee a little bit too early today, and so it just my brain is a little fried. Um. 
trapped by her own stupidity. Yeah. Um, so yeah, she is dumb, but it is just sort of like, you know, I guess, I guess in that instance, then I, then me kind of harping on this being visually said character wise, it may be something that she would say, but it is still a little, it is still a little bit literal. Um, but yeah, the actions, but the, the action was really good. Uh, and then when she gets trapped in here, uh, and then this little bunny dragon design is great. I really like that. Um, here was something that I'm just kind of going to, uh, you're going to just, uh, I get what you mean. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I also, I also caught that. Like I was going down, I was like, wait, hold on. I'm undermining what I just said. <laughs> so I was trying to clarify. Um, uh, here, I just want to nitpick just cause it's just cause I'm going to nitpick, but I've essentially created a cursed object. No, sh uh, no, you have created a cursed object as best as I can understand. So like essentially is an unnecessary word. Um, and, uh, you know, and just like removing it makes a stronger sentence. Um, there is a, uh, there's a, there's a free app, uh, online called the Hemingway app that is really, really good in helping you find, uh, um, like redundancy and overcomplication in your sentences and your writing and stuff. And so I use that to, uh, when I'm, when I'm doing things to kind of like beef, uh, to kind of like cut down and, and sort of trim the fat of what I'm, I'm what I'm writing. Um, but yeah, so here we go. But overall, this was fun. Um, I, uh, you know, like it was just real, it's just simple, simple, very pink and purple story about a dragon fighting, a, a fox demon. Um, I quite enjoyed it. Uh, there was a handful of things I, uh, would have liked to have seen just to pump this, just to beef this up a little bit, but overall really strong. Um, so here we are to going to the next comic that we're going to, uh, we're going to cover. So Carica crossed roads. So on their travels through the, uh, through the ruined hollow strata, the cyborg Mara and replicant six are taking, uh, are taking a, a rumored forgotten road to avoid confrontation with the minions of a local tyrant ruler, a detour, the duo will, uh, will come to rue. And so uh, essentially this is just, this is a dark cyberpunk story about, uh, a girl and her, and who someone is working as a bodyguard, uh, getting attacked and then the girl getting kidnapped. Um, so here is something. So opening up with this, uh, um, the ripples are really neat. Yes. I re I did like the, I did like the ripple effect on stuff too. Um, so aeons ago, the central terminal of, of strata responsible for calling a myriad of systems fell dormant. Megastructure has since become a hive of mutants, outlaws, vagabonds, pillaging its innards like vultures, some chasing promises of the architect's immortality. So here I want, like, this is, uh, and then, like, compelled by alien memories, a derelict mind wanders through a long forgotten passage to escort an errand anomaly away from the grass with a tyrannical five in his proxies. So, like, these two paragraphs right here do, um, do a lot to set up the world. Um, now myriad, now this isn't myriad systems isn't reference because it's not referencing anything concrete. So it doesn't necessarily give us a lot of information about what this, uh, um, about what like systems of what, like there's enough here to kind of get that this is important, but not anything specific to understand what its function is or what it's doing. Um, and then, uh, but then here we see like the mega structures. So then there's a little bit, so then it's like, oh, okay, so this is a, this is like a big city or something. Um, and then is, you know, and then now it's become this, you know, this, this sort of den of scum and villainy. Um, uh, and then chasing the, uh, the promises of the architects and mortality. So this is also like adding, this is doing a lot to set up the world, but it's also adding information that just sort of ends up being confusing because, uh, you know, we have this sort of describing like the space that we're in, but then all of a sudden we have immortality. And then we have this segment right here, which is talking about our main characters, but we've been talking about like the place uh, up um, so much so that when we move to this third piece of narration that doesn't sort of, sh doesn't sort of uh, explain that it's shifting the focus away from the place to people. It feels like it's still talking about the mega structure here. And so I'm, so when I'm reading this is like, you know, the mega structure is compelled by alien memories. A derelict mind wanders through, like I'm, I'm confused when I get to this third one. Um, so here's like a, here's sort of an example of like a really good idea that doesn't quite do everything it's supposed to. 
Um, and because it's just adding too much information. Um, so for narration like this, you kind of want to just uh, f- like pick like the handful of things that are most important. Uh, and then, um, uh, and then, uh, and then just, and then just describe those from there and then move on. Um, it would be nice to start with just some simple visuals and place a related. Yeah, actually that's, that's really good too. This I think is, is fine for here. Um, uh, like, well, it's fine by itself, but it would hit a lot harder if there were images behind it, sort of giving us an idea of what it was describing. Um, and then, uh, you know, and then we get hit here, um, with just this, you know, with just this building over here. I love this style, by the way. I love this art style, this really sort of, uh, you know, like, you, like sort of rough brushstrokey stuff. Um, I really love uh the the border design and the the word balloon design and how it just sort of everything is kind of reinforcing this like really scratchy grimy um yes the backgrounds are really really good um but this like everything is kind of like reinforcing this sort of like broken sort of patched together word and that like the you know these aren't clean and and crisp even the words themselves are kind of like wonky and weird um in terms of like the text. And so like all of this is working to create the tone of the story and all of it's working together really well. So this is, I, I love this stuff. I love the visuals and I love all the layouts and things like that. Um, narratively, uh, as far as the narrative goes, um, this, I learned more about what was going on in the story from reading the description than reading this, uh, this entry as a web tune. So, um, so to me, it's not super, it wasn't super clear what was going on. And I don't know necessarily like what or why is going on. Excuse me. Um, you know, and it feels like this is, which at the very end it references, but this sort of feels like a snippet of something that's larger that things will be like explained later, but they're just, I really would have loved more context, um, as to like, like we have this brief description of the world and the only thing we have about the characters are, is this little paragraph right here, which I would have liked a bit more, um, the tyrannical five and his proxies. Like, again, we don't know what the five, we don't know what five is. We don't know what his proxies are. Um, this could be anything. And so just having a bit more concrete information going into this, I think would have helped quite a bit. Um, I also want to talk about, uh, that this, um, that there's like some phonetic spellings of, of words, which I'm pretty sure is trying to create a um, sort of a dialect and how the, how the character is talking. Uh, writing dialects is very, very hard. It's, they're very easy to, to mess up. And, uh, and when you do, it ends up just kind of being distraction, distracting and confusing. And you don't get a sense of like how the character is supposed to sound like you just kind of get confused as to what they're saying um there are two writers uh that i um uh, that i that i know of that do that write dialects incredibly well uh <coughs> one is uh brian jock who um wrote the Redwall series in that like the different races of character all have different all speak in different dialects and uh and um and it's just it's done incredibly well and so you can kind of get it but they're all uh british like uk dialects um yes no redwall redwall's a great redwall's a great series don't you know don't knock on redwall um but like that's like if you want to see how like a cockney accent would like look written out then you know like read read uh that and i think i forget um i forget what race like what animal? Because Redwall is about like mice and animals and stuff doing these sort of like medieval fantasy adventures. Um, but uh, I forget what race speaks uh, speaks in in like Cockney. But like squirrels in that universe are Scottish, and so um, you know, and so you can kind of like see how that dialect would be written out. Um, the moles sort of talk like Hagrid from Harry Potter, so you can kind of see how that works out. Uh, and then the other writer is uh, Denny O'Neill if I remember correctly. Uh, And he was able to write with dialogue, uh, write with dialect incredibly well to where it it just, you could still kind of like hear how the character was talking and it wouldn't be distracting. Here, on the other hand, um, I don't think that it's 
quite uh, landing as hard as, or quite coming together in the way that uh, I think it's trying to. Like, I think this is, I think she's supposed to be speaking in like a sort of a Southern American dialect maybe. Um, but it, uh, but it's not registering to me uh, like that. Um, you know, mainly because like that kind of dialect, like the, you drop the G's on everything. So it's sort of like going and be gone. Um, going to be safe on the other end, like, you know, that kind of a thing. And so it's like, it's for, it's not for, for dialects and stuff like that. It's usually key words or key, like that are kind of written phonetically in the dialect and everything else is normal, unless you're very good at it and you can write the whole thing phonetically. Um, so here it's not quite coming together and it's kind of, and it's more distracting, I think, than it is, uh, an effective, um, sort of character, uh, a character trait or uh, for the, you know, for what the, for what's going on here. Uh, let's see. So where is information juice? Yeah. And then there's also, there's a lot of like world jargon, um, which uh, for those who know jargon is just, um, is a jargon just sort of means like words that only mean anything in a specific context. Um, you know, so like, uh, um, you know, like if like like take what's a good example? The only thing that comes to mind right now is common writer. Um, but like in common writer, they have things called henshin belts, and everybody just kind of knows what a henshin belt is or transformation belt. Um, but the word doesn't mean anything outside of the context of the show. Or like you've ever heard the word like le- if you heard the phrase legal jargon, where it's just it's just le- it's just a, a way in sort of the in a legal context to describe something that you already know because you're using words that mean specific things in the context of a legal document versus, um, uh, versus what it means in like everyday speech. Um, and so like, uh, let's see, what's, what's a good example. Um, yeah, some nail brain comes out into the river, pulls you out. Um, I'm trying to think there was a, uh, there's like I think there's there's more down the line, but there's just it's just fre- you know like the like five and his proxies. We don't know what that is. It's sort of just something that means something into this world, but it ha- the definition hasn't been given to us, so we don't know exactly what's going on there. Um, so just more con. I wanted more context in this. Um, so the use of color is very poignant in the drawing style. Uh, uh, font choice and word bubble types are all fairly unique. It would be cool to see more variety like this one yes i totally agree i think that like this is like a lot of the visuals are working towards creating a tone and a voice for everything um and so like it's just it all it's very very pretty and it all works together in a really interesting way creating something that's really cool and um i love this shot right here this is this is a really cool shot um (sighs) <sighs> let's see yeah so like the as far as like layout and things like that you know talked about word balloon uh and also like the background color and the panel borders are also working together because like the panels are black it's just solid color but then because of like the roughs kind of sketchy stuff there are moments where like right here where the black just sort of you know where the where the the border just sort of bleeds into the background and it creates this really uh really sort of sense of depth where we have you know our f- we have sort of like the frame of the camera right here but then this is sort of still a part of the larger, um, uh, you know, sort of like the larger space that we're reading. Um, And so it kind of makes it, it it sort of makes it, it makes it feel like everything's important, you know, like the backgrounds are playing a part, the the panel is playing a part of stuff, um, you know, and so like that's, like color is really important here, even though it is really um, almost Baroque, yes. you know, but like even like even just the small bit of color that's here, everything's important and everything's kind of playing into uh, into a tone. I love this sequence right here. So we have the attacks of just that. And then all it is because we established that her sword is red. So stuff stuff related to her character and her sword is all red. So you just have this and then you just have, you know cut like lines through the same panel like you don't you didn't have to all you all you did was just draw over it and now we have this really cool action sequence where she's just cutting up all these guys and then you see the result of the action here um this sequence is really cool i really enjoyed this right here um but yeah so like as and as, so as far as like the like clarity of read oh i also love this right here too where um 
you know, where like the sort of the, where the background is overshadowing the words themselves and they like, you know, it like it, it doesn't, the, the word, it's also like getting cut off by the word balloon here, you know, like it just really gives a sense that this is, this guy's like getting muffled or, or beaten or, uh, or overpowered. And this really, this, you know, just this visual right here is, you know, is giving more context to this visual right here. And so I think this little bit's super cool. Um, let's see, checking my notes. Uh, But yeah, so as far as like clarity and stuff like that, it you know like once the fighting starts, which is pretty early on, it's easy to f- it's easy to follow what's happening. But in terms of um, uh, the real people inners are also red, which helps pop. Yes, uh, no, just just like the the use of color is really really uh, important and, and great here. But like the stuff we're here where we're doing like the character stuff, it's not really like I don't know much about the world. I don't know much about these characters. Um. And so, like, the fact that they're talking about this, like, abstract thing, you know, about, like, dying multiple times and uh, and talking about immortality, which I don't understand why it's important necessarily, other than the reference at the very beginning, um, just sort of left me a little bit confused. And then also, like, it doesn't really ever play, it, it doesn't, it's not referencing any, any, like, larger conversation that the story is dealing with um, at this point anyway. Um and so, like, I, I would have, I would have loved more, a more of an interaction that kind of showed off their relationship, not necessarily their thoughts on this particular idea that maybe later on is important in the story, or will get, you know, more fleshed out or referenced later on. Um, but in this specific like introduction pilot, it's just, you know, like it's just sort of there. It's not working towards anything. It's not helping anything move forward. Um, uh, but yeah, action, amazing. Like this, just this is just a lot of fun. Reminds me a lot of Battle Angel, actually, in terms of uh, in terms of like design and aesthetic and stuff. Got a lot of Battle Angel Alita vibes. Um, I like as far as overall goes. Like this is really strong, and I feel like there's there's a lot to this world. I just kind of wished a lot more of that was referenced in the beginning, and we kind of knew what like more sort of important tangible information about the world and these characters rather than um rather than just like the abstracts that that is in the narration gets talked about or the abstracts that they talk about in the beginning um you know i kind of would like uh i would kind of like a little bit more information about the girl i would like a little bit more information about who's hunting them because like here we have um, you know, a moment where like right here where they've been fighting these guys and then, you know, this dude shows up, uh, and then, you know, he shows up, takes the girl and then leaves and then summons these things. And then let's see. I'll get you out of this. Uh, yeah, and then like there's a du- like, and then apparently they were like they were working with him and got double crossed or something. Like there's there's like refer like they're referencing a relationship that hasn't been established at all yet, and so I'm just kind of like so I'm just kind of confused as to like why they're there, why they're talking to each other when they were just sort of like um, when they just at this point just sort of served the function of being antagonists to fight against the main character. Um, so this is kind of this is an instance where I would have really liked to have seen a bit more context and dialogue from everybody but overall this is really good um very pretty really freaky uh absolutely love this um and excited to read more as it as it continues um this was a really really solid solid entry um next project hellfire by lita Do scrolling with the notes. Here we are. All right. So the hero versus villain story already happened in the villain one in a world with no heroes. Will Agrippa Revels be powerful enough to stop the, the fire from spreading or will some or, or will something else be required? And so this is, let's go to the beginning. Yep. 
Here we are. Our world is broken. Very strong, very, very strong, very eye-catchy thing to, to start talking, especially juxtaposed against like the sort of pristine background. This is a really strong opening right here. Um, but basically, this is a, uh, this this particular episode is about um, a young rebel, uh, you know, in a sort of dysto- in sort of a dystopian world ish, uh, f- you know, is is uh, fights against um, a demon like thing. Uh, See, writing in particular is still something I have to improve on, and getting a bit more critical of you will help. A lot of ironing and final comic. Oh, awesome. Yeah, I'm glad that I helped. Yeah, it's like, like I, in reading this, I kind of get the sense that there, that there were, like, that, like, the context is there. Like, you kind of figured out what these things were. Um, but it's not in the text itself. It's not, like, shown visually or it's not alluded to in text or dialogue. And so I kind of missed those things and wanted to see more concrete stuff. Um, but, yeah, so... Uh, so this young rebel ends up fighting a uh, like Satan looking guy um, ends up being in the middle of the fight is aided by, uh, by a strange, uh, by a, a strange vigilante who then turns out to be the, the nephew of the guy she's fighting and the son of the sort of big bad of the story. Um, and then, you know, and then we continue with the explode, you know, with like world is broken and then we kind of see it break uh, with the explosion and stuff. See, uh, also really hard to distinguish between what was clear and was not since I don't know everything and things, uh, things figure for me. Oh, that's what, uh, well, Devin, that you have, that's what test, test readers are for. Um, uh, uh, I hope to write in a way that some things, uh, can be pieced together, but I should be more clear. Yeah. The previous one. Yeah. That's why you have test readers or, uh, or just, you know, just like, uh, just someone to look over things because, you know, because all the things are, you know, all these things are in your head. So some stuff may be obvious to you. That's not necessarily obvious in the text because you know how it's playing out or, you know, what the references are. Um, but for someone who's, you know, reading it for the first time, doesn't have that context. So that's why um, you have someone, you either have like an actual test reader, like someone whose job it is to actually read this stuff and critique it like an editor or something, or you have someone who's, uh, taste you trust who doesn't have all the you know who you haven't like reg- you know regaled them with all the different nuances and stuff about the story that you're excited about and you just have them read it cold and, and then just sort of listen to their feedback and uh and kind of figure out like like you know what it what it is that was like that they resonated with what they didn't res- resonate with and like what were things that they were confused by because then that usually means that there's just like a piece of information or there's just a way that you can sort of reintroduce that information to make it more clear. Um, But yeah, that's what test readers are for. Test readers are amazing. Uh, You know, writing is not a sol writing is not a solitary thing. It, it, it is still, it is still collaborative. It's just, um, you know, just as it's as collaborative as you wanted it to be. Uh, Let's see. Shaking my powers beyond humanity. Thanks to those powers. Evil took over again. We're kind of getting, you know, this is establishing the world and the stakes and stuff of the story. Uh, um, everything come, but everything comes with a price tag, uh, and all pay- and all payments are made in advance. So here we have this is sort of like the the thesis statement of the story, but it's not really clear as to what's going on. This visual is amazing, though. I fucking love this. We're just like a close up and then biting of the of the fire. Um, uh, you know everything like it's not like all payments are made in advance. Like I you know uh it's it's ref- it's referencing it's still referencing abstracts and so it's like everything comes with a price tag okay well then what's that price tag rather than answering that question you just raise a new question with and all payments are made in advance so it's like i don't know what a payment is i don't know what's i don't know what the cost is i don't know what is you know like uh i don't know what is being exchanged here because this is all just abstract um and so referencing something a bit more concrete or rather not referencing something more concrete but just sort of answering the question that this begs rather than raising a new one i think it would make a solid like a more solid end to this beginning um uh and so uh but yeah so five minutes earlier and so we you know we flash back to here um you know the story is pretty you know the story is pretty the story of this particular instance is pretty again pretty simple um you know like just sort of 
girls, a uh, girl goes to meet guy, a girl meets demon instead of, or girl meets, uh, you know, monster instead of guy, uh, girl fights monster guy shows up and then they, re- and then realize that, you know, uh, that guy is also a monster. Um, but, uh, but as far as like the, but the, the thing that like I had a hard time with this particular book was the world building element of it. Um, you know, because she is supposed to be part of this rebel group, this dystopian rebel group, but she seems to be, you know, kind of, she seems to be walking around in impunity, um, being able to just to deface things. This guy kind of shows up and starts blowing things up. So initially, like initially it feels like he's just sort of a monster of the week, like some foreign thing coming in and attacking the, the center where everybody lives. But then you have this stuff where there's like propaganda images of him and his family. And it's like, Oh, I guess they run this. Um, uh, I hate to be dipping like this, but I have morning shift coming and falling asleep. Um, she's isn't my option. Oh no no no! It's fine. I'm glad that I was able to get to your your uh, your comic while you were still here. But no, if you need to go, then go. It's perfectly all right. Um, but yeah, thanks for stopping by. Um, great great work. Um, but yeah, but like this, but what I was talking about earlier is like this, these images sort of, you know, sort of give the sense that this is a dystopian, you know, this is, this is, this is a uh, dystopian utopia and that, you know, really bad things are happening, but then this, this shows up. And so there's just kind of like a discrepancy there, um, that I found a little, that I found a little confusing. Um, and then the fact that she's, you know, like there, the fact there's like codes and, uh, and she's like, and that she's running towards danger. Like to me, it, this felt like this was setting up, uh, sort of like a, um, like a, like a, you know, like sort of like a super police force protecting this one city. Uh, and she's a part of it. But later on, you find out that that's not the case, that it's actually, um, like this world is run by this particular family and that she's a part of like a rebel group, uh, and like the, so what's going on doesn't necessarily match up with how I would expect a world like this to work. Um, and so there's kind of, and so that disconnect there kind of kept me from really, uh, sort of fully engrossing myself in the story. Um, the kind of magic system that also works here is not super well explained. Um, See, like we pay for a power in advance by destroying a small piece of our coin. And so in, in the next episode um, that is in here explains more how coin and it's like uh, we can, con- uh, we can control the whole of it and fire is really, really annoying. But yeah, so like, um, but we destroy it by destroying a small piece of our coin. We can control the whole of it. Like we don't know what a coin is here. Uh, and so, like, I don't know what any of this means. Um, by destroying a piece of it, you can control a whole of it. Like, that seems counterintuitive to me. I don't get what's going on. Um, but in the second episode, it talks about how that, like, um, that the, the the magic system is, is that, like, you break something and then you you break something and then you gain control over the thing that you broke, um, which is an interesting idea. Um you know, and that you have to like, you know, in order to like, to activate your powers, you have to break something that you have, uh, that you have dominion over or something. That's interesting, but how it's talked about in the, the webtoon and especially the language that's used to describe the power system is also like, also is a little weird. Um, cause like calling the powers, like calling the thing that you activate as a coin, I understand wanting the, the, to continue the payment motif of the story. Cause it's, you know, in the opening narration, they talked about, you know, like everything costs something. And then this is, uh, um, uh, and that this is a, um, and that this is like the, you know, like this is sort of the price that you pay or something. See, uh, I would say the coin concept is precedent in the voodoo, wherein someone casts a spell, a small part of a person's Zubia to control that person. No, yeah, like the the basic idea is there and is compelling, but like the I'm talking about like the semantics, like specifically the words, because you're talking about an abstract, but a coin is a literal thing, like it has a shape, like all over the world, coins are kind of the same thing. They're round pieces of metal, and so um, you know, but here you're talking about uh, you know paying for your power by destroying a piece of your coin. So like your coin is your like is is like we don't know what it's um brain Mm, let me gather my thoughts again 
Um, so the, I'm so sorry, coffee. Uh, so like the coin implies a physical thing that you have to, that you have to break in order for, in order to gain power, you know, access to your power essentially. But by destroying it, but like this phrase, destroying a small piece of your coin to gain, to gain control over the whole of it implies a bunch of stuff. It implies that there's like a limit to what you can control. Like there's, you know, there's like a resource that you're constantly dipping into, which is not necess- which is not the case of how this plays out. And it's not how it's explained in the second episode either. Um, also, you know, like I said, a coin is a physical thing, even though these are all abstract things. So I kept expecting, like, I the way that this is written, I, I sort of assumed that the coin was sort of like the, like the mana pool that you had or something like that. And then, like, breaking it was dipping into it. But that's not the case. It's literally breaking something in order to gain dominion over it. Um, but then it also raises a lot of questions like how do you break fire in order to get control of it? I know that he's biting on the, uh, like he's biting on the match right here. And so I guess it's like extinguishing it as breaking it. You know, it's like, it's, it's all these different specific interpretations about the words, the language that's being used to describe this, that just kind of like muddles up everything and it makes it a bit more complicated than it needs to be. And so I just kind of got confused about how, the the magic system worked and uh, or the power system worked and was just kind of like left confused when the fight happened about what i was seeing and what i should be expecting to uh uh what i what i should be expecting to see and how things were being used and played out um you know because again like i think we get to her because we like uh let's see there's a description um uh oh yeah and then like uh, like as soon as the one reflect, they can keep using it to uh, we're paying for more power, which again doesn't make a whole like I guess just like destroying a little bit of fire, like they're extinguishing more fire to make more fire or something. Like I, not super clear on how that works. Um, her powers also doesn't make whole, like because it's you know coin shape sphere, so I guess she can just just make a sphere around herself. But then she broke gum earlier, so was it like like I didn't know if like break like popping the balloon or popping the the bubble in the gum was like is there power related to gum? Is there power to la- uh, is like force? Is there power um, like you know air or something like that? Like there's so many things that you could have interpreted from that um, rather than just like her just like crushing a spherical thing or something. Um, and so like the, the point, the ultimate point that I'm trying to make is that it's not well, it's not for me, it wasn't well established as to how this worked and what it was. And so I would have, uh, and so it took me out of the story. Um, do, 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 do. let's see, as far as like layouts and stuff, layouts, I thought were great. Um, you know, there's not a, there's not a lot of negative space, which is, you know, which is, uh, which is fine. Um, a lot of the panels and like word balloons, word balloon placement, all that other stuff works just great. Very easy to follow what's going on. Um, let's see. Uh, there are like a handful of moments where like, well, no, that's not, no, that was something different. I'm thinking something different. Uh, let's see. I'm afraid I have to dip now. My toddler is sick and I need to put it to bed. Oh, okay. Yeah. No children come first. I feel like uh, I feel like reading that I get, but I also don't get it. It's interesting. Yeah. No. In, in describing it, I felt like I was kind of getting lost in my own thoughts there. But it was just that there's like, there's not like it, it, basically what I was getting at is that there's there's not a simple like like sort of progression of ideas in order to understand how the powers work, and it seems to be rooted in the semantics about how you're describing the power. So like using the word coin or using the word pay or something like that, where like the basic idea is kind of there, but just how you're talking about it seems to just be more confusing or more complicated than what's actually being there. Um, uh, but yeah, so like, uh, but so I like this. I like the stacking of panels like this. That's really cool. Um, and then, oh, but there's, there's one instance where like, that I thought was, uh, was actually kind of odd in terms of just like, prog- like a sequence of events. Um, so right here. So here we have this character juggler, the vigilante, he, you know, double handed going down against his uncle, stabs him, but now his uncle's holding his side. 
which is this is a this is kind of a nitpick um and like you can't really hit someone in that area in that way from that angle so it was like we you know it's like he prepared the attack like this and then kind of went sideways into you know so here and then went sideways into here rather than just going straight down which is what the implication of this moment of of this position would show and so I just so that was just like a, a shock to me of sort of seeing where the wound was versus where the setup for the wound was um, was a little weird. Um, and then uh, let's see, looking at my notes still. Um, and then. But yeah, action was good, like layout was good, you know, like stuff like that. I will say the one criticism that I have about the action in this um, is that it's a lot of it is uh, a lot of it is just people standing around using abilities, you know, just like, you know, like either shooting fire or shields or something like that. Juggler is running around doing physical stuff. And that's and that's interesting. But just sort of seeing the characters kind of stand there and either like blast or defend or something isn't visually super interesting so it just sort of feels kind of the the fights some of the times the fights feel a little stiff just because the just people are just standing around um and then yeah and then we have here and then she shows up again um and then she has the one up and then here and, and then the missile sh you know and then that happens um like big missile hits and then like extinguishes everything. Um, but I, I, I will say that this also kind of like added to some of the confusion that I had about the world because if she, you know, like rebel groups in real life tend to not be very well funded or organized. They don't have, you know, like they have what they can get a hold of. Um, but having like a missile that's specifically designed to like extinguish fires or like wreck this guy seems like this is like a really well funded and it see it, it sort of functions as like a really well funded well organized rebellion which then sort of begs the question of like well where is it getting its money how does that work if everything is owned by this other corporate like this other family um and so it just it, it's sort of like what i'm seeing is like a a highly efficient police task force designed to fight these people doing their job but what's being told to me is that this is a, you know, this is a um, like an un, this is a a, a uh, unsanctioned rebellion fighting against the overlords that are these people, and just for me as a reader, there was a disconnect there that I just that was that just sort of felt weird. Um, but yeah, uh, but overall, like this kind of stuff, uh, like these kinds of stories, this kind of action. It's really, I really love this stuff. This is my jam. I re I enjoyed it. Um, even all the little nitpicks and stuff that I had about it. Um, and uh, what you know, I am I am curious about what's going to happen next and how this is going to continue. Um, you know, but I but there are just some things that I'm that aren't like connecting to me uh, narratively that I would like to have either like more information on or just kind of have it sort of more uh just sort of iterated to me in a more simplistic way that makes it easier to understand all right and next we have rule breaker rising by derpsy fish right yeah hot devil's cool powers i mean that's like that's the that's like the 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 um the nuts and bolts. So the, this is the kind of story that leaves me hoping that the rest of the story answers those questions, wanting more. Yeah. So for uh, so to to talk about that um, that idea is like is like you know story that leaves me hope uh, hoping uh, that like leaves you wanting more. Um, like there need like uh, for for that for me to pull something like that off, you need to have sort of like a clear starting point, and then how how you accomplish that is you have a very clear starting point, and then you introduce one you know new twist at like the very end of the story, and you you have that going on in the plot where it's just it looks like it's a normal you know monster of the week thing. Um, that then gets turned on its head when the person who's helping the main character is also one of the monsters of the week. Uh, but there's just a ton of different like details about the story that I wasn't that to me weren't super clear. 
um, that I kind of ended up focusing more on those than the the actual events that were happening on, like how the magic system worked and like how the world worked. You know, there were just these things that didn't that weren't quite lining up with me and how I would expect these things to function. And so I ended up fixating more on those than the act than the the main narrative itself. All right. All right, I forgot to read this first. All right, so three nations at war against a group of nomads trying to find a home. Surrounded by enemies, their leader, Nihon, chooses to make a last stand all on his own. And so this is a story about a nomadic tribe uh, trying to find a new home while being under siege by three different kingdoms. Uh, and then in a desperate gambit to protect his people, uh, the leader, Nihon, uh, stays behind to fend off three different armies so that... Uh, um, so that they can then escape. And uh, <clears throat> and so, like, outside... Let's see. Uh, uh, so, but so, like, uh, this is kind of another instance of, like, I kind of wish that there was more... I, 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 w- I wish I knew more about the world. Um, oh, yeah. No, you're welcome. Um, but this is, this is a story where I wish uh, there was more information about the world and about the context because this kind of story, um, all that stuff is really important. Like the why is super important to what's going on, not just what's happening. Um, you know, cause like the reason why everybody's here in the situation, uh, is motivating all of the character action. Yes. The tribe of tank tops and jeans. Um, and so, but there really isn't a lot of information given about like how everybody got here. There's like some sort of thrown away references to stuff. Um, sometimes at a little sort of, uh, that feel a little out of context uh, that just sort of happen. Um, and other times it's just sort of like, well, okay. Um, uh, like, you know, like, why are we referencing this here now? Um, and so, like, I didn't really get a good sense of, like, what was in, other than just, like, these people needing to escape, which is the story of this particular episode, but it's just, like, I don't, I, the, the, the why here is not super clear. Um, or not the why. Um, the, the timeline here is not super clear. Um, let's see. Uh... Um, here, this is a little nitpick, but like repetition of desert, uh, like, you know, uh, the, uh, the only fort is the desert, which means we'll have to settle on the other side of the desert. Like this is just, this is sort of just a redundant word choice. You could have, you know, just done something a little bit different and that would have made these sentences a bit stronger independently. Um, you know, we have, uh, still have injured. This is great where you're talking about it and then we see, so we see like the extent of the injuries of what's going on. This piece of information felt weird to me. Like they're the ones that agreed to sign the treaty and then turned around and attacked us. The reason why it felt weird is because we're uh, right around here. We're introduced to, you know, we're saying that um, we're, we're surrounded by three different entities. And then, and then there's just this sort of vague, they're the ones that, you know, so like, is it talking about all three kingdoms? Is it talking about just one of the kingdoms? I don't really know, but this kind of like confused me. I thought that like they were referencing like a fourth party that I w- that wasn't really there or something. Um, but just this kind of coming in uh, with not established, you know, with sort of not clear established context as to who it's referring to, um, kind of threw me a little bit. And so just uh, just something to reiterate that it's either talking about all three or some one specific person or something like that. I think would have been just that's all that needed to clarify. Um, and then we have, uh, let me look, let me look at my notes. Um, there's, there's a couple of like specific moments in here that I think I'll get to as I'm scrolling down, but for the most part there, for the most part, like just, just like I wanted more context with the story. I wanted to know why these, uh, like why they're running, why they're being hunted, um, or, or just kind of get a sense of like their relationship with the kingdom, which really isn't, there's some, there's some lines that kind of throw that around there, but I didn't get a sense, I didn't get, didn't get like a, like an emotional sense as to why this conflict is happening. Um, here I want to, I want to point out, uh, some of the layout stuff. So like, you know, here, this is referring to this person here. This is referring to this person, but, 
to me, it's there's not really a clear like it took me a while to kind of re- realize that who it was who it was referencing, uh, mainly because this is just this is here kind of right of center, and here this is again just like uh, you know more like uh, this is just you know sort of uh, God I'm so sorry brain. Basically, what I'm trying to say is um, is that it's not it's not clear who these are referencing to, um, it, and so like if this was like left over more closer to this guy, if this was like more over to the right over here or something, then it could be a bit more obvious as to like who they're referring to. Um, and then here, like you know, this is uh, this is this is talking about just the. Uh, just the location of where everything is. It's just ta- it's just defining on like what this uh, what this tent and what this meaning is. But now that we have a sort of visual language of this is meaning this person, this is meaning this person. It's sort of like this person that it's above. I guess is the liberation is like the main camp or something. Um, and so it's just so like it's just the placement of these things that's kind of creating some confusion as to the flow of information. Um, and so like if that may have been a little bit uh, that needed to be tweaked a bit more to make this a bit clearer. Um, and then, uh, do, 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 do. oh yeah, here is something that I thought was interesting. So it says going up against four neighboring states, but we've only been referenced, there's only been talked about three different states here. Um, and so like, I don't know if this was a, uh, if there is like a fourth player at hand that we just don't see or isn't referenced. Um, or if it was maybe like a, you know, or if it was like an oversight or something, I don't know, but referencing four, but always, but talking about three different players was, was strange. And I kept wondering who the fourth person was, um, this here, again, I'm going to kind of nitpick on semantics here where the plan is is that he's going to stay behind to fight the army so that everyone could be leaving. Um, but the phrase you all need to be long gone, um, you know, uh, see, by the time they get here, you all need to be long gone implies that they have time to escape and they have a time to get away. So like it kind of, so that begs the question of like, well, why is he staying? Why is he fighting? Um, I understand the intent of this is just to, it's just to say, Hey, like you need to get as far away from here as you possibly can while this starts. Um, you know, so that you have them so that you can like maximize the time that I'm able to give you but just the phrasing here is sort of alluding to other pieces of alluding to something else. Um, and so this was just kind of like a little, this is just a little semantic thing that, that was just, that confused me a little bit. Um, there are a lot of, sh- you know, this stuff is really cool. This shot right here, which is this big sort of like almost splash page of just how small he is versus how big the army is over here. Um, I will say the colors, like diff- like the different colors of the different uh, of the different countries, is uh, or the different kingdoms, is a good idea. Their armor design is all pretty similar, so they just kind of look like they're a part of the same army. Not that they're representatives of three different armies, um, which I don't know if they if they like these kingdoms are a part of a larger collective or if they are individual kingdoms that have come together. Um, that's not really made super clear. And so this just kind of like adds, this sort of implies that they're all one nation, but then the descriptions down here say that they're all different things. And so there's just, it's not, this isn't super clear in terms of the storytelling. Um, uh, and then um, let's see, what else am I talking about? Uh, looking at notes, looking at notes. Do, 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 do. Um, so we have right here, oh, oh that's a megaphone. I know. Oh no, I don't know what that is. Um, so we, so here's a, here's a panel that I want to kind of talk about that I thought was interesting. So here we have this established where like they're having the shouting match because of him talking under his breath, which I'm, you know, like we kind of established the distance between these two people right here. So this is, he's murmuring under his breath. So then how is he able to hear and like enough to question, like to even not like to even just hear the noises of what he was saying. And then we have him yelling here and then they're yelling back and forth. 
And then we have this like close up on his on his closed mouth, but then we have this speech bubble that's implying yelling. So the visual here to me is translating like a uh, another whispered moment, like another something to himself, not very loud. Um, but the word balloon is saying that he's yelling, and so there's this sort of. So I had to like kind of do a double take here of just remembering that oh this guy's yelling rather than him just sort of saying this to himself. Because then they, you know, because then this guy yells back at him, and they have another converse, and they continue the conversation from there. Um, and so this, just like this visual mixed with like this, just was kind of at odds for me, and it wasn't. And again, just it was just it was just adding to a bit more confusion of the story. Um, and then uh, let's see, is that guy speaking, or could it uh, could it be off screen yelling? Well, see, that's, that's the other thing is that no, is that like this visual, because it was established here that it's yelling. Um, and there isn't another person introduced in the scene until after this conversation is over the, you know, it is, it's shown that he's, um, it's sort of, it's implied that he's, that he's talking right now. It could be an off person. It could be an off screen thing, but, there are there are more clear ways of showing that information and so this is just because like there's you know we're asking questions about this it could be sort of fleshed out a bit more um uh yeah because like a new person doesn't show up until right here after everything's done and so like even if it was someone off uh, yeah the mouth closed i'd interpret that as thoughts yeah and so it was just it was just like you know, and it would make sense for him because earlier they established that he was like murmuring to himself. So it would, it would make sense that he would be talking to himself again if he was mad about something. Um, but it's not, it's, or at least how the story flows is he's just yelling again, but it's closed mouth close, you know, uh, tight on his mouth, closed lips. Um, it was just, it was just not super clear. Um, and then, uh, and this scene right here is really cool. This is just all manage with arrows coming down at him is really is just really crazy. Uh, I love I, I just like this visual right here where they're just casually standing there. Um, this design choice here with like the checkerboard um, or the kind of like radiating like board that comes underneath him, I thought was a really interesting idea to show the uh, um, to show the the like the the area of effect that his spell has. I thought that was a really interesting choice. Um, you know, this was confusing because he says kneel and then and then everyone's stuck. And then, um, you know, and then it's like, you know, what triggers this elemental mage control gravity. So he's he's controlling gravity. He's not compelling them to kneel. He's using gravity to do it. Um, and like the, impl the before, it seems like his he had the like he just would speak a word and then compel them. But then he's actually using some other force to bring him down, um, which wasn't necessarily like the if it was um if this was if that that switch was important uh or mm, what am i trying to say here if he if it if he was actually trying to obfuscate how his powers worked i think it would be good for one thing and then like the characters figure out what's actually happening and then he sort of drops that motif but instead it's just he just says kneel to sound cool and then people are freaking out about gravity and so it doesn't it doesn't. It's not doing a whole lot uh, to help uh, to help kind of like show what's going on or establish how the magic is. Uh, see, I don't think they're being stuck and being forced down based on action lines. Um, yeah, no, I, 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 I can see that. Yeah. <sighs> um, you know this. So this is a this is a great exchange right here. Uh, because it's, you know, what it, like, how can an elemental mage control gravity? So here we're kind of talk we're sort of like establishing the rules of magic in this world, um, through dialogue. And so, you know, so it's like, okay, so an elemental mage has limits. One of those limits is not gravity or one of those limits is controlling gravity. Apparently in most cases they can't. And then it's just, just because you can find yourself to one kind of magic doesn't mean I have to. So it's, um, so it's saying that, like, okay, well, there are other magics that can control gravity, and he's just doing something interesting. So you kind of have, like, the so you introduce an idea, and then you kind of you iterate on it, or you expand on it here. Um, and this little exchange was good in sort of showing what was going, in sort of giving me a sense of what was going on. And also kind of also showing how out of depth the army is compared to this guy. 
Um, and that, you know, he's doing stuff that they just have no idea how he's, uh, how or why he's doing it. And so I thought that exchange was really good. Um, and then, null- and then he can also apparently nullify magic. And then this guy's just moving sand around. Um, so here we kind of have another instance of just sort of what I talked about earlier of just sort of like talk, saying stuff that we already know by visuals. Uh, you know, it's like he's using some sort of crowd stunning magic, but it doesn't reach us uh, and donates in the back. Like we already know this because we established that his particular powers, when they're stunning people or when they're keeping people in place, they have these action lines on them where they're just sort of being forced down and they are, you know, they're not present on this part of the army. So he doesn't necessarily need to say this information again. We already see this just by the effect. Also, we know the area of effect of his ability because of this board that's that's underneath him. So we don't need to we don't need this guy to say this again. We already know this information. Um, and so rather than him uh, sort of saying something that either could be like you know that would reveal more about his character or say something about like the army or, or whatever the situation that, you know, is in right now, we're just sort of reiterating stuff that we've already seen and it doesn't, it doesn't serve anything. Um, okay. And then we have more fights, explosions. And then we have this gun, which I don't know why it's there, but it's cool. Um, this now see this, uh, these two panels kind of confused me too, because I guess this, this is supposed to show, um, his, uh, his board, like the, the area effect, like shrinking or moving or something, but there isn't that big of a difference between these panels. Um, and so just the only thing that I see is retreat and then just like, you know, and then just like some little movements or something like that with the board. I was, I was really confused as to what was going on here. It's not super clear to me. Um, and then someone yells, you know, his control broke. And so, so I guess there was some sort of change in what he could do. And so then everyone thinks that they have the advantage. Um, but these panels were just not super clear to me. Um, let's see. And then we have fighting. Um, but yeah, so read and so like readability, uh, like visually, like panels and stuff aside from like those one, two, those two that I mentioned earlier, um, it's pretty, it's pretty easy to follow in terms of that. The effect stuff is really good. Um, you know, and this is big, uh, this big one guy fighting an army sequence is really good. Um, and again, like I love, I love some of the effect stuff that they show just to kind of show the, the, like the extent of what he can and can't do or the area of what he can and can't do. Um, and then, and then this is where I think this honestly is like the strongest part of the whole thing where he just summons this, you know, these skeletons from nowhere. And then this really amazing design of these things. And then the, you know, this like King or, or uh, Regent or whatever. And then the army behind him, this stuff is really cool. This I think is where, the the comic really shines of just like the designs and um and like this with the whole like the lines connecting to everything um and this shot right here is really really cool uh this right here is where this this i think the the comic really kind of like became something really interesting for me i was really confused about um you know uh so the because this starts getting into what I think are like the rules of the magic system in this world as well, um, but uh, like a few like I don't know what like you know it's like is here where it's like the weight of a hundred thousand souls is not something a few rules can bear. I don't know what a rule is yet, even though it is in the title rule breaker. I don't know what a rule is, and apparently a rule's broken here because we have this sequence. Um, where you know you have his friend then explodes out and then they're gone and then he's stunned and i'm like i don't know what just happened i don't know the cost like it seems to be there was some sort of cost or some sort of bad thing's going to happen but i have no idea what it could or can't or what it could be um you know what type of thing is setting it's setting up and so this, the ending just kind of left me confused because of this, because of this lack of information. Had there been 
like a little piece of exposition in the earlier on to sort of describing like the magic that they have or what a rule is or something like that, I think would have been, would have been a, a better set up for this so that when this happens, I understand the stakes and what's actually going on. Um, also when I first uh, was reading this on my phone, I didn't realize that here was Nihon, that here was the, the, um, was the leader. I thought he was just sort of another guy because the board was, wasn't there under his feet. Um, and so I think if there had been like, you know, like this sort of exploding out and the board there with all the people running around and then like the board shrinking to here and then that, and then it disappearing again, I think would have been a bit more, a bit clearer as to what was happening. Um, but all in all, this is, uh, like, again, this is, this is a really interesting thing. I love the, I don't know what they are yet, but these things are really cool. And I'm very curious as to what they are and want to, and really want to know more about them. Um, and the visuals at the very end, especially really came together for something interesting. Um, so yeah, this is a, again, another really good, a uh, really good entry into this whole thing. Uh, and then next we have Fractal. Finally, we have Fractal. <sighs> by Cosm. So it says, Exiled and imprisoned in an island factory, Fell has lost all hope. That is, until he meets Theo, a robot discarded among the scrap. In the world outside, the king has issued a challenge. Gather the 12 living fractals and bring them to me with Theo by my side, uh, by his side, and, uh, and his sights sit on the reward that would change his life forever. Fell joins the hunt. Uh, Dirtfish. Oh, awesome. Yeah, I'm glad that was, again, just like really glad that you guys are, are finding this helpful. Um, you know, and, um, and, um, you know, and like, I, I really, uh, I am really enjoying going through all these and, and reading through them. Now here is, uh, Fractal, I think is, is an example of, let's see, uh, I'm curious if you've done any comedy ones yet. I might be interested in searching VODs for them since I do comedy genre ones that it would be useful to see what you said about other ones. So uh, of the now 10 that I've covered, I'm only covering stuff that's in the call to action. Um, and I'm kind of going through them in the order that they've been submitted. So I don't think I've covered anything that's specifically comedy uh, or action comedy. Um I know that there was one last week where the the artist who who did it uh, does primarily work with comedies or something like that. Um, yours was thirsty, Nano. Like it had some it, it, like that's. I think yours was thirsty more than uh, more than comedic. Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but I haven't I haven't covered a specific one that's specifically trying to be comedic yet. Um, so I have not gotten there. Here I want to give I want to talk about some uh, about a uh, comic that's doing a lot of things. Uh, it's thirsty in a comedic way, of course. Yes, of course. Um, but here I want to talk about something where it's doing it, uh, doing a lot of things really, really well. Um, you know, so far I think this is the strongest uh, entry that I've seen so far. Um, you know, and here we have, uh, you know, here we have like a really interesting, like, uh, just sort of progression of conversation where it starts as, you know, black nothing. And then as the, as the conversation keeps progressing along, we get closer and closer into the scene. And then here, um, as far as story goes, I really love this. Like the overall plot is, um, and last week you were thinking uh, there was one that might have been. Yeah, I thought that I thought that someone who like mainly worked in comedy or was supposed to that one was supposed to be a comedy, but it's it was defined as a uh, like action sci-fi or something. Um. Uh, but yeah, but like uh, um, the basic plot of this is pretty simple. Like it was explained in the um. So here, here's an example of like the stuff that was in the description of the 
of the web of this particular episode of the webtoon, I can point to examples where all that information is here. Like reading that and then reading this, they're all they're both saying the same thing. And so I'm not getting new or different information out of that explanation. It's all here and ready to go. And I think that's that's what makes the one of the things that makes this really, really strong is that, you know, when in, like I don't need to I can just pick it up and read it and understand what's going on. I don't have to read a uh you know, like a brief synopsis of the story in order to get enough context to understand more or better what's in the comic, um, you know, I can just go in there and read it. Um, here we have, here's a, a really cool uh, idea where you have two different fonts. So you have two different characters. Um, I will say that the fonts aren't, for me, aren't different enough to really... Uh, to show strongly that they're, two, that they're two different characters. I like, I understand that this is more um, like sort of, this is like a robotic text. This is more normal, you know, like the comic Sansy stuff. Um, and so, uh, you know, so then when we get down here, we know who's talking and we know that she's a robot and she's a, uh, yeah. And, and he's a human it. And so like the idea is really great of having like the robots having a, having a specific font versus the humans having specific fonts. Um, it adds to like a voice for the characters and it's just a really great idea. But I think that the text needed to be more different or more obviously different uh, than, than what the norm, sort of the human speech was so we can get that a bit more clearly. Um, but yeah, and then we have that. We have the title card. And then we come here. <laughs> this is so great. Um, but here, like we have... Uh, like we have just like, you know, we, we come in here with like the, you know, we have the black and then we come in here to solid white background. Um, but just visually, there's a lot of stuff going on, just sort of showing it of just showing a bunch of stuff about this world. So we see him, he's like covered in grime. Um, we see everybody else. It's messy and dirty. And then we have these, you know, sort of pristine looking robots. So we have, so it looks like a dystopia. It looks like a slave workforce. Um, you know, people just running around doing like random menial jobs, uh, which is what this world is. Like, it's just, you know, this particular, this particular spot is just, um, you know, these are, these, this is slave labor working for, you know, this sort of overlord. Um, and, uh, and so like we get that from text and we get that from visuals, which is, you know, it's all sort of reinforcing itself. Then we kind of move into black backgrounds. Um, cause now we're in a darker, where we've we've seen we've transitioned to a darker place, so now the background is black rather than being white or or gray or whatever. Um, and then something that I really love about this is that we have, um, is that like when it's story stuff, when it's narrative stuff, we have these like more um, like square rectangle um, panel layouts of you know just like you know square rectangle rectangle rectangle. But when, um, and then this, I just love this, this, this little, like, this little moment says so much about the world where, um, or it's like, it talks about, it, it shows so much about the character and about the world where you have Theo who's curious about this random thing. Uh, and then you have fell the main character who's like, is just done with it. Um, you know, and then like dance hours, like to keep her spirits so we don't go insane. And so it's, the, you know, it's this very like corporate overlord, like random things to try and, um, uh, gen, like manufacture a uh, like contentment or a sense of camaraderie in people that is all it's clearly fake and clearly bullshit um, and we see it here and just the sort of weird sort of zombie motions that everyone's doing I also love that there's a person in a wheelchair right here uh, and that like all these and like there's such variety in the people who are here um, like everyone is a unique weird person and it makes this you know it shows that this world is fun and interesting and all the robots are the same so it's like there's a clear discrepancy between who's in power and who's not. Um, you know, it's just, it's really good. But then, yeah. And then like here, right here, we have awkward panel where it's a door lifting. And so it, it gives, you know, it gives a sense of space. Um, and then we have this little, this little moment right here is great. Cause it's just, it's just characters sitting in a, you know, sitting in a box, but we can tell a lot by their character. We can, t you know, tell about their personality. We can tell about their relationship with each other. Um, you know, there's just a ton of, uh, just ton of information and in just like one simple image, um, you know, and then like how this is framed where you have, 
you know, them leaving with nothing. And then the first thing you see is the robot. And then you see them escaping just like that little sort of um, that, that sort of a twist reveal at the, uh, as you scroll down is really effective. But yeah, so here we're getting into like fights and now we're getting into more abstract, weird, hard angle things. This is what I was talking about with uh, lettering earlier. Like this is a really, really great bit of, lettering where it's not only is it the sound of lightning going through him and stunning him, but just like the visually it looks like electricity sparking and it's just, it's just adding all to this moment, making it super interesting. Um, and then I want, I want to get to an action, like an actual like fight segment. Yeah. So here we go. So like we're getting into fights and then now we're moving away from like squares, we in triangle and like rhombus. We have this really great angle, low angle here, and then now they're like, you know, they're, it's all angled differently. Um, you know, so now it's, now it's like squares, but off center. And then here, and then we have like just this triangle panel here and the, the hard angles really kind of add to the, the sort of frenetic aspect of the visuals that are going on. And because it's a break of the norm of just these, you know, square rectangle sort of traditional panels, like it makes it stand out all the more. It makes the combat stand out all the more. Um, and I just, I absolutely love that. Um, and then, uh, let's see, talking about looking through my notes. Um, I, I mean, I could, I could gush on this for a while. This was the, all of this was just done really, really well. Um, here's another thing that I thought was a great, just sort of like visual storytelling cue is that, you know, he, Fio, this guy, Oh yeah, no, the art style is amazing. But Fio, this guy, when he rescues her, um, or, or Fio, and then Fell, this guy, um, when he finds her, he, you know, she's chained up. We'll go back to, let's see, we'll go back to where he where he pulls her out of the scrap. He was like ready to go, and so he unlocks her, you know, because you know, because she's chained to a wall, and then what he does is he chains her to him. So he's not freeing her. He's using her to get out. You know, he's uh, he sees her as a tool in order for him to escape and do what he needs to do. So just this little piece right here is, you know, telling part of the story about their relationship and about him as a character and about her as a character because, you know, she doesn't recognize that's what's going on. Uh, you know, that, that he's just imprisoning her the same way that he's been imprisoned by these people. Um and so it's like, oh, okay, so Fell's kind of a dick, Fell's kind of selfish, and Fell's manipulative, and we get, all, and Fio is, you know, naive, but she's strong, and she's useful, and we get all that information off of just that one visual of just them being, of just him locking her to him, um, and I absolutely love it. Um, God, there's just so much good stuff about this. I, um, but yeah, of, of the, of the entries that I've read so far, this has been the strongest, um, in terms of just how everything is put together and, um, and then also I want to talk about the backgrounds again, cause there's a moment, uh, further down where, cause, because they're in the building, it's all black. The background is all black and then it just, it work And then like with the panel borders and the designs, it all ends up working together. And then there's a transition, right yeah so as they're escaping so then here we have the glass window and so they're still inside and then and they break out and then it breaks out into blue and then we now have a white background and so now we're in a new scene a new situation and the tone is different and it's just transition great oh this is just this is just really good this is just uh, this is very good um not much in terms of like critique here i think this is all just kind of coming together uh, really really well um and so, yeah, so I highly recommend that everyone check. I highly recommend everyone check out everything that we're reading, but this one in particular is doing a really good job. Um, and then we transitioned here. They have this little joke here. And then now we're back into the, now we're back into the present. Um, and then, you know, and then they move off and this is the end. <sighs> but yeah, so that was fractal. Um, again, I can, I can talk about that for, for, you know, a really long time, but I recommend that everyone sort of read this and get kind of a sense of, of, um, how it's all playing together. Um, but yeah, so that was the comics for this week. Oop. All right. Then I'll move this over here. Ha ha. 
Uh, so if you guys have any, uh, still got a few minutes left. Um, do you guys have any like questions or anything that you wanted to throw my way? Um, did you guys en enjoy the readings this week? Did you guys um, enjoy what I had to say about everything? Let me know. Uh, any? Oh yeah, well thanks. Yeah, thanks, Caleb. Yes, no, it's like every everyone did everyone did an amazing job that submitted. Um, you know, like I I, I really want to stress that that just like even if I have a lot to like say about what uh you know what could or couldn't be better or something like it's you still did an amazing job just getting all that done. Um and I I really and I really want to harp on that till the very end. Um Oh yeah. Uh, how many submissions did I get? Uh, currently it's at 35. Um, uh, how many comics worth of web Wednesday do you got? Yeah. So right now, uh, in total of people who have submitted, there are 35, um, uh, people that have submitted comics. Uh, it's still open for submission. Uh, I think the cap, if, if we end up getting to 50, I'm going to cut it off there. Cause that's just going to be, that's just going to be like three months of doing this. Um, and by then like the announcer would have been, uh, would have been, uh, I think revealed or something like that. So yeah. So, but like if we get up to, if we, if we max out at 50, but right now it's, 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 it's sat at 35 for like the better part of a week. Um, so that's the amount that I'm going through. So it's just going to be another, um, uh, another five weeks of web Wednesday stuff. Uh, no, 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 35 total, not 35 left. So like five, so we've already done two weeks, which, so we've already done 10. So now we've got five more weeks left. Um, but yeah, thanks everybody for coming out. Uh, again, uh, you know, really happy that you guys learned and, you know, think that my, my, uh, my ramblings are useful. Uh, probably, uh, we really appreciate your observations, kind words. Oh, thank you. Yeah, no, fractals, fractals really, really strong. Um, uh, if I have a twin with a CT, uh, I have a twin with a CT entry. I should send her over here. Yeah, I mean, you do so if she, if uh, if you think that you know she would enjoy me uh, sort of reading through everything. When you said twin, I thought you had like a twin. You're talking about like a twin comic or something. Like you had like two comics because I know Nano, you submitted two, both of your comics to this. Um. But yeah, so all right, I'll see you guys. Uh, I'll see you guys next week. I'll have the new list of comics posted on Monday, um, and yeah, I will uh, sign twice by accident. Yeah, I, a couple of people did. It's it's fine. That that's been corrected, I think. Um, so y y your doubles were were noted, and then the and the the extra removed. It's not that big of a deal. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, so all right, well, I'll see you guys next week. So until then, goodbye. <laughs>